This flag right here says what? The truth about slavery. What we're showing you is that there's a direct connection to the transatlantic slave trade, also the conquest of the Native American Indians in the 1490s, to who you actually are. You understand that? Give me Romans 8, verse 16 for a second. Because what we're out here to do is to show our people that your history actually begins right here from day one. In beginning was the Word. And the Word was God. And the Word was with God. And God for a man of the dust of the ground. That's where your history starts. Now, we want equality. Right. Let me tell you something. In any kingdom, there's a ruling class and a serving class. Right. If you people, if our people that were brought over on slave ships, if our people who was conquered and destroyed and changed language and things of that nature, if our people think that we will ever be equal to the people that rule over us, you're fooling yourselves. Right. That's right. And that's why we continue the perpetual cycle of, of being down in the dumps and actually getting worse. Right. Or becoming more degenerate because we don't want, we don't aspire to be this here. Read it again. Above. Above all people. We don't aspire to be above all people, to be greater than. Right. I'm sorry to say it, but I want, an, I want a kingdom where my people rule. That's right. Where right. my God rule. That's right. So that we can be the ones on top and then we have people serving us. That's just, that's just called a kingdom. Right. That's, that's called right. a kingdom of heaven, as a matter of fact. A kingdom has a ruling class and a serving class. Our people, we're living in our enemy's kingdom today. That's right. That's, those are the things that our people don't understand. The more you fight for equality, that's the more you dig another rabbit hole for yourself, keeping your people at the bottom. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Our, our equality has to go. Right. Voting for another person to, to rule over this kingdom here has to go. That's right. why we don't advocate that thing. Right. Because it's not helping our people. That's above right. what? Above all people go ahead. that are upon the face of the earth. You were created to be above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Is that good news or bad news, sir? That's good news to hear? Hey, brother with the red hat. Is that good news to hear that God chose you to be created above all people or bad news? Is that good news or bad news? It's good news, right? That is the gospel. Go back to verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 4. So we're yeah. going over the good news that our people need to hear. That our people are the God's chosen people and that the kingdom of heaven is for you. You were created to rule. Right. That's why you're better than everybody. Right. It's not a coincidence that the melanin in your skin actually helps heal you and helps, it brings you closer to, to the sun, to nature, everything. Right. Whereas the people that don't have naturally melanin in their skin, they're doing all type of experiments trying to get that thing. Well, yeah, no. It's not a coincidence. Right. We were created this way for a reason, read. This is the book of 2 Corinthians, verse chapter 11 and verse four. Uh -huh. yeah. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus. So if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, read. Whom we have not preached. We have not preached Jesus because all we preach is not the Bible. The Bible preaches a Jesus Christ with woolly hair and with skin like brass burned in a furnace. That's right. And it's not the Jesus that's put here. That's right. Sir. So guess what we're supposed to do? Read. Or if ye receive another spirit. And now all of our people have received this docile spirit of Christianity. Right. A marriage is 50-50 now. Right. Actually, a woman can lead over a man. Read. The black man, hey, guess what? Just be happy being a slave. It's all going to turn out. Mm. All nations are going to be saved. Right. The man that actually is about to shoot your brother down in Chicago and the laws that are being set up, the prisons that they create to fill, for us to fill, all of them can come into the kingdom of heaven with us after doing all this to us because Bring we got to love our neighbors as ourselves. Right. Right. Out. That is not a true gospel. Right. That is not the truth according to the Bible. You cannot find that anywhere right. in the Bible. Free. Which ye have not accepted. But we have not accepted that because we shouldn't accept that. Right. These people, they don't even want to give you reparations. Bring it out. They tell you what Hillary Clinton said. Oh, we, we'll give you a job, black man. Right. But we ain't going to give you no reparations. Bring it out. 40 acres and a mule, which was promised to your forefathers when they unleashed you off of the slave plantation with not a pot to piss in right. and walking around. Right. We're going to give every black person 40 acres and a mule. They say, and one of them brothers say, hey, hold on a second, hold on a second, Todd. We can't do that. 
Because if we give them that, they'll start building things. They'll start coming together like a black Wall Street. Right. Like how Columbia, South Carolina was 40 and 50 years ago. Bring it out. Like how Tulsa, Oklahoma was. Well, so 70 billion to Israel. But then they'll send reparations over to Israel. Right. 70 billion. They'll give the Japanese reparations from the World War II concentration camps. Bring it out. And you wonder why you can't. Oh, we'll give you a right to vote. Just shut up, Negroes. Matter of fact, let's give you another nationality. We, now we're calling you African-American now. Are you happy with that? You're closer to your roots in Africa now. It makes absolutely no sense. Read. Ye might well bear with me. And that's what we're doing now. We're contending with the false image of Jesus Christ. We're contending with the false teachings that go on in our churches that have our communities all jacked up. Right. Because our people are better than that. You understand that, sis? Let me ask you, what's your name? Kim, what's your name, bro? Mitch. Mitch. Notice that y'all two are here standing up listening, right? Whereas people, a lot of times people have come and go, some people won't even take a flight. Bring it out. But they rather learn a black, when does black history start? In February, right? Now, when we, we're in school and when we learn it, when does that, when does that teach us? Where does the teacher start? From slavery? Somewhat? Do they teach us who we were prior to slavery? Give me Job 8 and 8. Bring it out. Because, you know, it's a beautiful thing to see all of our people to here together, but it's also a sad estate also, looking right. at our people and to see the defeated, defeated mindset of our people and also our people, the lack of wanting to understand who we are. How you doing, sis, in the brown? Right. Our people don't even want this understanding. Why? Because their minds have been corrupted by this image for too long, for so right. long. How you doing, bro? Read that. This is the book of Job, chapter 8 and verse 8. The Bible is the book of the so-called black and Hispanics and Native Americans' fathers. Right. Black history, black culture, black heritage starts in the Bible here. That's right. We must wake up to that. Read. For inquire, I pray thee of the former age. How you doing, sis? Can I ask you a question? I'm just getting here. Let me celebrate. Okay, let me celebrate. Read. And prepare thyself. It says to prepare yourself so-called black man specifically. You are here to prepare yourself for what? To the search of their father. To the search of your fathers. You know who your forefather is, brother? Who is your forefather? His name is the, the greatest black man that you know. Your father? Who was before him, though? Was he a great man? No, no, until I get to Get to who? Who is one of your great forefathers, Mr. Kim? I don't know him. You don't know any, right? They'll teach us about Martin Luther King and uh, Medgar Evans and all those brothers. They started to take that out of schools too, though. And they're taking slavery out of schools as well. Right. If we were to tell you that one of your forefathers was actually Moses written up in the Bible, would you believe that? Our people need to hear that because these brothers getting mad about the Little Mermaid, they actually get mad when their boss or whatever fictional character gets changed to another color. Why can't we get mad when our true brothers and sisters in this Bible here are painted and depicted as a different nation? Right? That's right. You see how they act when, when they put a mermaid as a black girl is a problem. Bring it out. But look how we act when we tell you that Moses was a black man or Christ was a black man. People don't right. care about that. Right. Our people don't care that Christ is a black man. Right. But the other nations show you the mentality that you must have as a people. We got to get back to that mentality. Give me Moses. Let me show you what color Moses is. We're going to go over color in the Bible with you to show you that every single prominent Israelite biblical biblical person was a so-called black man or woman. And they had skin just like us. They had hair just like us. Right. These are your forefathers here, read. This is the book of Exodus, chapter two and verse 16. Uh -huh. now, now the priest of Midian has seven daughters. So now Exodus is going over a story. It's the priest of Midian, he had seven daughters over there in Ethiopia, read. And they came and drew water. And they came and drew water. How you doing, bro? What color was Moses? Black. Moses was black. Is that in the Bible? Is it in the Bible? What's your name? I gotta go. Darrell. You guys, y'all not gonna get lost in there, right? You good? No, I gotta run, but I appreciate right. it. We'll have this conversation. And fill the thoughts to water their father's flock. Right, so these Ethiopian sisters, or the sisters, the priest of Midian's daughters was filling the flocks, they were filling the troughs, right? Um, they was, they was watering his, their father's flock, read. And the shepherds came and drove them away. And the shepherds came and dragged these sisters away, read. But Moses stood up. It says, now here's the key thing, Moses stood up, read. 
and help them with and water their flock. So keep that in your mindset. Moses stood up and helped these sisters water the flocks of their father. Moses did that. Who did it? Moses did it. Who did it, kid? Moses did that. Read. And when they came to Ruel. Now when they came to Reuel, their father now, after getting the flocks watered, read. Their father, he said. Their father said this. How is that? Ye are come so soon they, today. Their father asked him, how did you come back so soon? You know, because normally y'all probably take all day. The, the, um, the shepherds move away. They got to wait their turn. But who helped them with their flock? Moses helped them, right? Read. And they said. And then and, listen to what they said. Listen to how they described the person that helped them. Read. An Egyptian. And what? An Egyptian. And what? An Egyptian. Did what? Delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds. So now they just said an Egyptian delivered us out of the hands of the shepherds. Now, now you got to ask yourself, what color were the ancient Egyptians? What color were the ancient Egyptians? Sister Kim. The ancient Egyptians, like, they were black people, dark-skinned people, right? Right. That's your modern-day Watusis today. Right. They just said Moses looked just like, they called Moses a what? Say an Egyptian. An Egyptian. That, the, that uh, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds. So they just said, they didn't say Moses because they didn't know who he was. But they said an Egyptian delivered him out of the hand of the shepherds. So what did Moses look like then? He looked like an Egyptian, which means what color was Moses? Well, Moses was a so-called black man. Right? That's right. How you doing, sis? Um, you watched some um, that movie, The Ten Commandments, with Charleston Heston as Moses? Yeah, the white man, right? Is that the true image of Moses? No. Moses was a black man. Do you have a problem with him being depicted as white man? No, I want him to be black. You want him to be black? I, I know he was black. Good, all praises. So we just showed that Moses was black. Now let's go to the New Testament now. Give me Paul. Acts 21. Well, this is the man. That's 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 a depiction of Christ right there. Christ was supposed to be black. But what he's supposed to be black. Are you angry about that though? No. Why not? Are you angry that they that they they depict Christ as this? No, no, I think that, that, that I don't even deal with that. We gotta stand up for that. Uh, I do. But you know part of deal you say you don't deal. Our people say they don't deal with it, right? Look, but let me ask you a question. You let me ask you a question. What? You go to church? Of course I do. What day you go to church? I go on Saturday and Sunday. You go to Saturday and Sunday? Yes. You deal with this. No. What happened? Raised All right, Kim, take it easy, raised, man. Raised, what happened? I was raised Catholic. Okay. Catholic oh, the Catholics are heavy. The Catholics are the ones right here. Where they at? Is the Catholics a white religion or a black religion? No. The devil at the Bible speaks. <laughs> right. That's right. I came down here and someone took me to the church. Non-denominational. Non-denominational? What does that mean? Teach you about the Bible? They weren't teaching. Okay. Hey, brother and sister, right here, can I ask y'all a question real quick? You in a rush? Let me ask you a question. Does the color of Christ matter? Does the true color of Jesus Christ matter? See, you see what he says no? That's the problem with our people. We'll go ahead real quick and then we're going to get back to Paul. Our church, our school is right here at 1823 Greg Street. The people are the church. Oh, you're right here. You're right there up the block. You can okay. come over at 4 p.m. and learn your history. You okay. understand that? Okay, I can do that. All can praises. Do that. All right, I can do that. All right, thank you, I'll sis. Oh, well, same to hey, you. Hey, uh, now, 4 p.m., you. Uh, do you need me to be dressed differently or anything? Yes, um, let me show you how, how our women dress. Give me um, Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. Because God has a dress code, right? Right. And part of this is that we're bringing our people back to their heritage. The same way you see us men dress, the way we dress, Let's show you how the women dress, or how, how we would. We're going to go over that. Give me Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, and verse 5. Yeah. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So the Bible says that the woman should not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Because you had a question about dress, right? Read on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So it says, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Read. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. So it says, all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God, right? Now, read it again from the top. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. Go ahead. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Stop. So what would a woman wear that pertains to a man? Pants, right? It's not a mystery, right? It's pants. Read on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. And it tells you a man shall not put on a woman's garment. So now if we, in our organization, 
we're bringing our people back to their heritage, which is to reinforce, reintroduce God's laws to our lives so that we can get out of the, 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 cap tip, the captive mindset that we're in. Right. Right? So what do you think we would allow our sisters to wear in the school? Oh, okay. Wouldn't we allow? We wouldn't allow them to wear pants, right? Because that's what God says, right? But now, find you, and if you don't have one, you can still come. That's something that we provide for our sisters as well. Right. Because we, because like in the Christian church, they tell you the Bible says, "Come as you are." Yeah. But their meaning of "come as you are" means come in, the, come in the Christian church the way you are and stay the way you are. Never change, no laws, because the laws are done away. But you don't have to do nothing to yourself. Right. So go ahead out there every day this week and sell crack. Walk up in the Christian church as a crack dealer, praise God, you leave the church now, and you go back to selling crack. That's not what we do, and that's not what the Most High's program is. The Most High's program is about change. It's about being born again. It's about reintroducing our people to the discipline that it takes to keep his laws, statutes, right. and commandments. Right. How you doing, bro? What's going on with you? Four o'clock today. What's going on? We're going over laws. Does the Most High have a dress code? We got another dress code law for you. Does God have a dress code for anybody? Does the Most High have a dress code that he requires our people to wear? And will there be any type of judgment from God? Because we're not out here to judge our people at all. All we do is show our people what God says, and they, the judgment comes from the Most High. Right? So, pants. And what does God call pants? Read that again. Read all the way through and it gets to rock. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, and verse 5. Uh -oh. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Go ahead. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Go ahead. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. So it says all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. Now, our sisters now are ignorantly moving around. Matter of fact, some of our sisters, like, you of age to know that there was a time when our sisters didn't wear pants. That's true. You know that, right? But then they said, oh, my God, we're under restriction of the church. That's why I, I can't take that, right? But that's the discipline to keep you from being an abomination unto God. Right. You understand? So I asked them their nationality, right? Got? And they said, black American, black American. African American. Oh, man. So I said so, that you're going to show them their true nationality at this black history. Event. Definitely, because that's what we're doing. You got that, right? See us at 4 o'clock, sis. What's your name again? Sharon Scott. Sharon Scott. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. people who they are according to the Bible. Right? That's right. This flyer right here says what? The truth about slavery. What we're showing you is that there's a direct connection to the transatlantic slave trade, also the conquest of the Native American Indians in the 1490s, to who you actually are. You understand that? Give me Romans 8 verse 16 for a second. Because what we're out here to do is to show our people that your history actually begins right here from day one, and beginning was the word. And the word was God, and the word was with God. And God for a man of the dust of the ground. That's where your history starts. That's right. All those different things. Read that. This is the book of Romans, chapter 8 and verse 16. Uh -huh. yeah. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. This is what happened to every single one of us that you see here, plus all of us that are beyond. And plus those of us now that understand who they are, but haven't stepped out yet and actually joined their nation yet. You understand that? The spirit bared witness with our spirit. The Spirit, give me John 6 and 63. We're going to show you what the Spirit is and what must bear witness with your spirit to understand what's about to come out. Read. This is the book of John, chapter 6 and verse 63. Go ahead. Yeah. It is the Spirit that quickens the flesh. It's the, slow down. It says, it's the Spirit that quickens, meaning it's what changes, what comes to life. Read. The flesh profits in nothing. Our flesh doesn't profit anything. Read. The words that I speak unto you, Go ahead. they are spirit. And they are life. So this is Jesus Christ talking. If you read the scripture, you know the red letters is Christ. 
So it says the words that I speak unto you, meaning the words that are written in this Bible. Because Christ comes in the volume of the book. He's the Old and the New Testament. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Go back to Romans 8. This is the book of Romans, Romans, chapter 8 and verse 16. The spirit itself bears witness. So it says the spirit itself, the words in this Bible bears witness with what? With our spirit. With our spirit, with our minds. Right? Read. That we are the children of God. That we are the children of God. The same children of God. God's chosen people that are written of in the Bible. Right. Because we read the Bible, we act like the Most High is talking about all nations. But you constantly hear about the children of Israel. Right. The children of Israel. Right. God's chosen people. Right. The sons of Jacob. Right. That's what you hear in the Bible. You don't hear nothing else. That's right. Christ said, I have not come, I have not been sent but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's right. She black too. She black too. That's what our people need to understand. Right. And it's, it's crazy. It's not it's it's not crazy because it's what happened to us during these times right here. Right. But the real read that again for the sister that just came up. This is the book of Romans, chapter 8 and verse 16. Right. Right. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. That we are the children of God. We're not black. We're not African American. We're not Negro. We're not Christian. We're not none of those things. We are actually the children of God, and the Bible is going to prove right. it. That's Let's see right. how we prove it now. Give me Deuteronomy 28. How do we prove? How do we know? And that should be the first question that anyone asks us. Because we're not, we don't come out here hostile. Right. We go and meet our people wherever they at. Right. Whether it's in the church, whether it's at the bus stop over there, whether it's at the crack spot over there, Jeez. whether it's in the nice neighborhoods, whether it's downtown with the rich black folks, that's who we go to. That's right. Because all of our people need this word because all of our people are destroyed today. That's right. Because we right. don't know who we are. Right. right. Give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Yeah. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. Now yeah. Moses is speaking, give me a flyer. Hey, you can take mine, brother. Now Moses is speaking to the children of Israel in the wilderness here. Read, read, give me one and one, Deuteronomy one and one. Hold 28. Deuteronomy one and one. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter one and verse one. The book yeah. of Deuteronomy was not written to all nations. We got to get that out of our minds. The Bible is a history book for the children of Israel. That's right. The children of Israel's forefathers chronicled laws, statutes, and commandments. They chronicled their history in here for us during these times. That's right. right. It was passed down for generation to generation until our enemies got their hands on it. Right. Until they conquered us in warfare and got their hands on our Bible and, what you call it, infused themselves in this here to keep us destroyed. That's Read. right. The Bible is only about the children of Israel. Read. That's These right. be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. This is the words, the book of Deuteronomy are the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. That's who he's speaking to. So go to Deuteronomy 28 verse 15. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. Go ahead. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. The children of Israel made a covenant with the Most High. If they listen, because he delivered them from Egypt. If they, if we listen to what the Most High told us to do and keep his commandments, his law, statutes, and commandments, then he would set us on high and keep us in rulership over those nations. We had rulership under David and Solomon for like 80 years. But we lost that very quick, very short. Read. To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now he's telling us that if we do not agree to keep his commandments and do all that he told us to do, all these curses shall come upon us and overtake us. Give me sign and wonder. Sign and wonder. 46? 46. 46. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 46. Go ahead. And they shall be upon thee. So he says, and these curses shall be upon you for what? For a sign. For a sign. How do we know that that is Richland Street right there? The sign tells us, right? Right. When we're driving and you get to a stop sign, what does that tell you to do? You stop. A sign is something that identifies a person, a noun, or a person, place, or thing. It right. identifies that thing. Read that. And for a wonder. And for a wonder, because you're going to wonder how did these people go through these things and why are we still in the situation that we're in today? Read. And upon thy seed forever. So that's sign. These curses are going to be a sign. So I'm going to ask you all a question. Slavery. What were some of the attributes of slavery? Well, attributes meaning what were some of the things that happened during slavery to our people? What happened? Oh, we were we were introduced to Christianity. We were introduced. That's a heavy one. We were introduced to Christianity. I'm gonna deal with his. What you got? 
rape, rape was in the was in slavery. What you got, sis? Give me, you gonna say rape? A whole lot of things happen to us now. What you got? In, name anything. It's in here. How do we get over here? Slave ships, right? So I'm gonna give you one. Slave ships. Transatlantic slave trade. I'm gonna give you that. And if you think of something, let me know. So let's deal with you. You were first, right? We learned Christianity, right? During slavery. No, we, it was forced on us. It was forced on us, right? Give me that. 28 verse 64. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 64. Let's keep the mindset, though. We're dealing with the curses that identify that are signs letting us know who we are according to the Bible. Read. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. It says the Lord is going to scatter us. That's one of the curses among all people. Among all people. I was scattering from the west coast of Africa. That's why a lot of people that do their genealogy, and you can leave it there, and say that they're from Nigeria and all those different places on the west coast of Africa. That's where we were taken. These were Israelites taking them. We lost tribal warfare against the Hamatic Africans. You know what I mean? We're not the same people as the Hamatic Africans. There's Nilotic and Bantu Africans over there. Right. We lost that warfare and we were sold to the so-called white man and the Arab man and the other nations by the Africans, which are not Israelites. That's right. You can't get that twisted. Because we see that out here a little bit. It's a little twisted. Now, some of our history is in Africa, because Jerusalem is in Africa. That's right. right. But our customs, we're not African people. We're not African Americans at all. You understand? And we were scattered like slave ships stacked up like this in sardines. Can you imagine going through this right here? I don't even like sleeping on the top bunk with my, my brother or sister at the bottom. That's crazy. Right. When you're living in a, a, a two or three bedroom house with five or six children and y'all cramped up. Imagine this though. Defecation, urination, menstrual, somebody dying right next to you. You're dealing with that for months at a time. Right. That's what I, that's a try. This is what the most I put on us for not being obedient to his laws. He chastised us on a godly level, the same way you may chastise your child on a on a on a worldly level, right? You give him a pop and you tell him, hey, hey go sit in the corner or you take your game away, do all those things. God is chastising us on a godly level as a nation. He had to deal with us as a nation. That's why he had to have these things happen. But there's a divine purpose in that, though. Read that. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. So we were scattered among all people, read. From the one end of the earth, even unto the other. Because we didn't just come over here in America. We were traded into Europe. Right. We were given over into Asia. How do you think the Great Wall of China was built? No. Yep. They had to have African, so-called African-American slaves to build those things. That's right. There's pyramids over there in Asia. There was pyramids here in America. Right. Who built those things? Deep. We like to say the Africans or the Egyptians did those things. Right. Where did they get that wisdom from? It was our people. Read. Give and, that one in Joseph and Psalms where Joseph taught their senators things. Read. And there thou shalt serve other gods, uh -huh. which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. It says, and there you shall serve other gods. Now we're going to deal with your point. Which neither you or your fathers have known. Read. Even wood. It says even wood. Read. And stone. And stone. So that wood. What is the wood symbolic of? What is the symbol in the Christian church today? You see a cross. Because our forefathers were hung on trees. A right. wooden cross was made. And that, that they hung us on trees. Right. Christ was crucified on a cross. Similar to a noose around your neck now. That was a, a means of torture. A means of death. It was a death penalty for our people to be hung up on a crucifixion, and our people wear that around their neck with pride. Bring it out! Like that brings them closer to God. No, that shows you how destroyed you are right. as a people that you would sit there and glorify the way you might as well get a golden noose and hang it around your neck and be proud to wear a noose and have a black man hanging from it, as a matter Jeez. of fact. Yep. You might as well have that. Read that again from the top. So we dealt, we learned Christianity. And we learned something else. How you doing, my brother? Greetings, brother. How you doing? You um, Islam, Muslim? I'm Christian. You Christian? Okay. Read that again. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. Go ahead. From the one end of the earth, even unto the other. Go ahead. And there thou shalt serve other gods. It says, and when we get in those lands, we're going to serve other gods. So to your point, we learned Christianity Shame. by our slave masters. Bring it out. That was beat into us. The pastors... The only pastors that were ordained, the black pastors that were ordained to teach our people were the, the black pastors that conformed to the teachings of our white slave masters. That's right. Which was to keep us under control. You understand that? 
Read. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Our forefathers didn't know nothing about no Christianity. Read. Even wood. That wood is that cross for Christianity, but we learned something else. Read. And stone. And stone represents Islam. Because when they go over on a pilgrimage in Mecca, what do they do? They go and kiss the, the, the Kaaba stone. Right. We learn Islam right here in our captivity right here. That's yeah. right. So yes, that is one of the curses. And guess what? What people actually lived those curses? What people lived the curse that you're talking about? Teeth. What nation of people went through that? Well, they learned another religion that our forefathers didn't learn at all. As far as I know, only us. Only us, the so-called, turn that back around, the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. That's the spirit bearing witness with your, that's what bear witness with our spirit. Right. But since you mentioned during slavery, our women were raped. Right. True. Our women were raped. And our men couldn't do a damn thing about it. Yep. That one. That's true. Verse 29. Verse 30. And what are these curses again? These curses are a sign that identifies that the people that actually went through these things are the children of Israel that's written up in the Bible. Look it out. God's chosen people you have not been done away with. That's the children right. of Israel are still standing on this earth today, and they are not, unless the sun and the moon and the stars go away. We're going to get that in Jeremiah next. Then the children of Israel be abolished from the earth. Right. Thou shalt betroth a wife. So we telling you, brother, that's your wife right there. Let me, let me show you something real quick. You shall betroth the wife, read. And another man shall lie with her. And another man is going to lie with your wife. Was that, <laughs> no, you don't want to hear that. But that's heavy. And sis, you had that, that was yours, right? When another man lying with another man's wife, how did he do that? By force or was it, was it nice? He did it by force, right? Right. No. Israelite according to the Bible. That's so we're right. showing you what happened to the Israelites. Go to Deuteronomy 28, 68. Tribe of Judah. Deuteronomy. From the tribe of Judah. Matter That's fact, right. Give me the tribe of Judah, Jeremiah 14. The tribe of Judah. The Jews. What color were the Jews, sis? They're... What color are the Jews predicted as today? Depicted as today? White. They call them white, right? Let's see what the Bible says the Jews' color was, though. Read. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. We Bring are showing out. the Jews who you really are today. You are the Jews, so-called black man. Right. Read. Right. Judah mourning. It says Judah mourning. The tribe of Judah is in mourning. Read. In the gates thereof language. Our leadership is languishing today. It goes back to your point. Why don't we own those things? Why is our community all jacked up? Because our leadership is jacked up. Right. They're not right. teaching us who we are. They're not teaching us proper doctrine so that we can get out of the dung here that we're in. See? Everyone is out here today on the Most High God's Sabbath day. See? Our leaders in history used to condemn this type of event. Right. We're not out here to do that, though. We're out here to teach our people who they are so that they can, it may convict them and, and want to read the Bible more and learn who they are. Read them. They are black. They are what? They are black. What color are the Jews? They are black until the ground. That's in the Bible. They tell you that the Jews are black people. Right. That's their skin color. Read That's again right. from the top of the system. Judah morning. So it says Judah morning. The Jews are in morning. Read. In the gates, they're of language. Our leadership is languishing now. That's why our communities are the way it is. Read. They are black. They are what? They are black unto the ground. The Jews are black, brother. That's right. You understand that? That's right. The Jews right. are black. That's how we know that the tribe of Judah is the so-called blacks that, are, that dwell here in America today. Because they're the ones that are dealing with the prophecies written about them here in America as well. Right. Give me Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Bring it out. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Bring it out. Back. Give me 48. Give me 48. Verse 48. Go ahead. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies. We're dealing with the signs that identify who the children of Israel is. It says, therefore shall you serve your enemies. Read. Which the Lord shall sin against thee. A lot of times we like to get upset with the other nations. We may get upset with a Caucasian person or a Chinese person for doing us dirty, whether in their nail salon or in general, right? Teach. But the Bible's saying this here. Read that again from the top. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, Read. which the Lord shall sin against thee. God sent them after us for our own disobedience and rebellion. The same disobedience we're seeing today when we are offer our people a flyer and they won't take it. Exactly. You're like, damn, yeah. like, what are we doing here? Teach them are we really your enemies? We come out here saying, look, this you're not, you're not African American. That's the truth. What? How can you be African American when you was Negro before you were called Bring African American? It Bring it out! How can you be African American when you was called black before you were called African American? Right. That's right. But you don't want a, 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 a flyer that tells you who you are? Bring it out! Get nigga. If you was a nigga! Right! Before you were called, guess what? You black man, you were called boy. Yeah. Before you was called African American. That's right. Damn, what, what is the hatred in that? 
Where's the problem in that? Telling you that you're God's chosen people and that you must change in order to get back to your rightful place. That's right. Where's the problem at? Our people are destroyed. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Oh!